Hello, everybody. Hey, I wouldn't want to be accused of pushing you guys too hard here during quarantine. So today's lesson is on counting. How's that sound? We've made it to notes number 51. And you know, speaking of quarantine, I think it's time for some quarantine confessions. So I don't know about you, but just being in my house all the time, I just keep wearing the same clothes over and over again. I mean, I could probably get away with having like two outfits at this point. How about you? Doing less laundry, wearing the same thing every day? So that got me to thinking, hmm, what if, suppose I just have two pairs of jeans, four t-shirts, and three sweatshirts. That's my wardrobe. How many outfits, outfits can I make? Now, let's assume that an outfit consists of one pair of jeans, a t-shirt, and a sweatshirt. Well, let's figure this out by drawing a tree diagram. So I'm going to start with jeans. Let me call these J sub 1 and J sub 2. Jeans 1 and jeans 2. Those are my two choices. Now, I choose a pair of jeans and I have four choices for t-shirts. So let's call those T1, T2, T3, and T4. So I'm going to branch off of each pair of jeans my four options for t-shirts. T1, T2, T3, and T4. Now at this point, how many outfits have I made if an outfit is just a pair of jeans and a t-shirt? Which you know, the weather's warming up, so pretty soon it might just be. That would be eight outfits, right? J1, T1 is one, J1, T2 is one, J1, T3 is one, etc. You can count the branches at the end of the tree, and that's the number of outfits. But I tend to run a little cold. I like to wear a sweatshirt. In fact, right now I am wearing jeans, a t-shirt, and a sweatshirt. And let's go ahead and branch off of each kind of t-shirt with three kinds of sweatshirts, S1, S2, S3. Okay, keep going. All right, so there's the completed tree diagram. I had a little bit of a spacing issue, or maybe I just have too many clothes. I don't know. Let's count how many branches do we have at the end here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. See, I told you this was counting today. So I have 24 outfits. Now, of course, we don't always want to draw the diagram. It's not reasonable to draw a diagram if the numbers are fairly large. This was even kind of a pain. And it's not necessary if you just think about what's going on. So we had two choices for jeans. We had three, no, whoops, four choices for t-shirts and we had three choices for sweatshirts. And what do we do with those numbers to get 24? That's right, I heard you, Tara and Stella, I heard you that time. Two times four times three is 24. We just multiply those. So that leads us to, drum roll please. Oops, the fundamental counting principle. If one event can occur in m ways and another event can occur in n ways, then the number of ways that both events can occur is m times n. Now you can extend this beyond two events. So the example we just did had three events. Wearing jeans was an event. <laughs> you know, lives are boring right now. Wearing jeans might just be an event. Wearing a t-shirt is an event, and wearing a sweatshirt is an event, and we put all those together, we have three events. Boy, imagine if you wore a hat. Now that would be a good time. So we just extend it. You multiply the numbers. So if it's m ways, n ways, and p ways, then you would multiply m times n times p, et cetera, four events, five events, and so on. That is the fundamental counting principle. That sounds pretty important. When you get to calculus, there's a fundamental theorem of calculus, and I think when we did polynomials, there was a fundamental theorem of algebra, so fundamental theorems tend to be kind of basic but critical. Now, one of the critical parts of this fundamental theorem is the word and, so if you think back to the outfits I was making, 
I was wearing jeans and a t-shirt and a sweatshirt. So when you're using the fundamental theorem, the fundamental count, counting principle, you're talking about this event occurs and this event occurs and this event occurs. It's not or. So imagine if the question was how many outfits can I make if an outfit consists of jeans or a t-shirt or a sweatshirt? Well, first of all, that might not be appropriate. But if that was the question or something similar, you have two pairs of jeans, four t-shirts, three sweatshirts, but you have what? Nine articles of clothing and you're only choosing one. So you would just add. That is not the fundamental counting principle. I guess we could call that basic counting though. Okay, let's see what's next. All this thinking about quarantine and staying home and hardly ever changing your clothes. And then I got to thinking about, well, staying home from school, missing my students. And I, got, I started thinking about you guys as a class and all of your unique characteristics. And you know what I was thinking? Who's my favorite student? Who in this Honors Algebra 2 class is my favorite student? You know, everybody has their unique characteristics. I mean, Vivian has a great sense of humor. Kylie has high quality work all the time. Calvin thinks about things in really creative ways. Elise has amazing hair. I mean, how can I choose? So then I was thinking, well, I wonder how many ways there would be to choose if, let's say I had a, a favorite student and then a second favorite student and then a third favorite and so on. I could, I could put you all in order. This sounds like a great math problem. So how am I going to do that? Well, let's see. How many ways are there to choose a first place, a second place, etc.? There are 19 of you. So how many ways to choose all those places for students in a class of 19? We can figure this out. Think of it this way. You have first place. How many choices do you have for first place? There are 19 students, so there are 19 choices. And you have second place. Remember I said and, that means I'm going to multiply. How many choices do I have for second place? Well, I used up a student, choosing that student for first place, so I only have 18 students remaining to choose from. And, so multiply again, I'm going to choose a student for third place. How many choices do I have? Well, I already chose my first place and I already chose my second place, so now I have 17 choices left. Now you can see where this is going. We're going to multiply fourth place, fifth place, sixth place, etc., until we get down to 19th place. Yay! Who thinks you're in 19th place? <laughs> no, you're all in first place. None of you is in 19th place. Of course, you're all my favorite. How many choices would I have left when I got down to this point, though? Just one. So what have I done? I have multiplied all the counting numbers, starting with 19 and going down one each time. 19 times 18 times 17 times 16 times 15. And I type that all in my calculator and I get, well, I can't even write it out completely. I'm going to have to write it in scientific notation. 1.216 times 10 to the 17th ways of figuring out how to rank you guys as my favorites. Now, I do have a lot of free time on my hands, so I probably could sit down and try this, but I'm not sure that I'm really going to have the attention span to make it through all of these ways. So I, I think I'm going to pass on that. Now, there is a shortcut, and I suspect you know where this is headed. The shortcut for writing this out, the symbol that we use when we want to multiply 19 by 18 by 17, et cetera, all the way down to 1, is 19, what is it? Yep. 19 factorial, that exclamation point is the factorial symbol. And factorial means multiply all of those whole numbers until you get down to one. Okay, your calculator has factorial on it and there's a separate video I've recorded for you using my calculator. It's about a one minute video to show you two ways to find factorial on your calculator. So make sure you look at that. So let's talk more about factorial and general. n factorial would be expressed as n times 
the next lowest whole number, n minus 1, times the next lowest whole number, n minus 2, times the next, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, till you get down to times 2 times 1. You stop at 1. So really, these are just the counting numbers. However, we do have a definition for 0 factorial, as strange as that might be. It fits in with all the things we do later in the chapter. So it will make more sense once we get to other things, but you're going to have to accept at this moment that 0 factorial is 1. OK, let's do a few examples. Problem number three, expand each expression and evaluate. Expand 5 factorial. So what does it mean? It means 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's the expansion. And then evaluate. Multiply those together, and we get 120. How about the next one, part B? Expand and evaluate. So we have 6 factorial as our numerator, so that expands to be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And the denominator, 2 factorial, 2 times 1, times 4 factorial, times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now, let's simplify that so that we can evaluate it. Notice that we can cancel a factor of 4, 3, 2, and 1 from the top and the bottom. And all we have left is 30 divided by 2, so that would give us 15. OK, problem number 4. Evaluate 100 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 97 factorial. Well, you could have some trouble if you try to put this into your calculator, because your calculator cannot handle 100 factorial. Also, you don't want to expand it, right? You don't want to write all that out. But notice I didn't say you had to expand it on this one. It just says evaluate. So let's take advantage of what we saw happen in part B. And let's think about how to apply that to this problem. Let's partially expand 100 factorial. It would be 100 times 99 times 98 times. OK, I'm going to write the rest, the 97, the 96, the 95, the 94, as 97 factorial over with 3 factorial, 3 times 2 times 1 times, I'm just going to leave 97 factorial as 97 factorial. And then we can cancel the 97 factorial from the top and the bottom. So what we have left is 100 times 99 times 98 divided by 6. That your calculator can definitely handle, and you get 161,700. OK, we have one more example to do in this lesson. And you know, I was thinking about who's my favorite student and everything, but I was also thinking about your futures. Because of course, you guys need math for your future. And right now, you are getting math. You're not getting quite as much as you're supposed to or you're hoping for. But I really hope that doesn't impact your, your future and uh, you know what you end up doing. Like, I was thinking. What if, because you didn't get enough math, what if you like, couldn't get the career you wanted, and then you, you couldn't make ends meet, and you turned to a life of crime, and you ended up in jail? And who knows, maybe then you end up making license plates. So I thought, well, the least I can do is teach you a little bit about, about license plate making. So that's where we're going to end here. So this last example is you're making license plates which consist of two letters followed by five digits. How many different license plates are possible if, and we have two different scenarios, repeats are allowed, repeats are not allowed. So let's start with repeats are allowed, meaning you can repeat a letter or you can repeat a digit. So here's the license plate. It has two letters, so I'm going to put a little blank for each letter, and then it has five digits. So let's put a little blank for each digit. Now. How many choices do you have for letters? Hopefully you realize that we have 26 letters in our alphabet, so you have 26 choices for the first letter. Now you're going to get a first letter and a second letter. So remember, we multiply with and. How many choices do we have for the second letter? 
Well, we're repeating, we're allowing repeats, so we have 26 choices for the second letter. And you get five digits. So and multiply, how many choices do you have for digits? Digits would be zero through nine, so there are 10 of them. So you have 10 choices, and you're, you're allowed repeats, so you have 10 choices for every digit. So we have 26 times 26 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. And I think, if I did the math right on that, I think that gives you 67,600,000 possible license plates. So the good news is, if you do end up in jail making license plates, you'll have enough to keep you busy. Now, suppose that we're not going to repeat any letters or digits. So here's the license plate, and we have the letters, and we have the digits. Okay, how many choices do you have for the first letter? Well, still 26, and then we're multiplying. We're going to multiply all of these because we get this and this and this and this and this. How many choices do you have for the next letter? Well, you already used one letter, so you only have 25 letters left available. Now we're moving on to digits. You have 10 choices for the first digit, but you used a digit, so you only have 9 choices left. You used a second digit, so you only have 8 choices left, 7 choices, 6 choices. You see the pattern. So now, how many license plates are available? 19,656,000. That's it. Okay, significantly fewer, but still quite a bit. That'll keep you busy. Speaking of keeping you busy, for now, you're not in jail yet. So, here's your assignment. Page 686, chapter 10. Wait a minute, what happened to chapter 9? Well, we are skipping over chapter 9 for now. We always do. This is not a quarantine thing. This is a normal pattern of events for this class. We come back to chapter 9, part of it, after we do this chapter. So, please check your answers, ask questions, send pictures. Have a wonderful day.